now, this amateur inventor faces his biggest challenge ever. This car has to have 100 miles on it by Friday. That's four days away. A high-performance car that'll score 100 miles to the gallon. He has a ragtag team of gearheads. I mean, it's exciting and wonderful. <laughs> but at the same time, terrifying. And now, he has competition. A $10 million contest has upped the stakes. Top in their field, people have designed this machine. Vying for the prize, big league automakers, elite race car drivers, and these garage jockeys setting out on the ride of their lives. Um, and we've got a couple of one. the garage jockeys with us right now. X Cars will be airing Thursday, January 6th. And we're joined by a couple of fellas from Future Vehicle Technologies, George Parker and Todd Pratt. How Hi guys, are you, how gentlemen? Are you? Good Good great. to see you. Uh, uh, let's us. talk about the show in general first. And, and George, maybe tell us about the X Prize and, and what it actually is that you guys were competing for. Well, actually, the, the, when we started the car, the X Prize wasn't around. It was uh, it came, came along later. But the, the X Prize was about inviting people to design and build a vehicle that was capable of better than 100 miles per gallon that could go into production and become an everyday vehicle for the road. <laughs> Seems you, easy. And you just <laughs> happened to be working on something like that. How hard like could that, that be? Yeah. Now, <laughs> now how be? long had you been tinkering away with cars before you got involved with uh, the XPRIZE? Pretty much all my life. And this particular vehicle I designed about 30 some odd years ago and only maybe five years ago started to build it because I didn't have the money or I didn't have the time or I was, something was going on. But, right. but when gas hit a dollar a liter, it was time to change directions in yeah, my life. Yeah, no and kidding. Well, and, and walk us through this vehicle a little bit and, uh, and what you guys uh, were putting together for future vehicle technologies. And maybe just explain the, the car. Well, in, in the beginning, the car was designed as a high-speed commuter because nobody in the world that I know of was actually building that. So there's all these people on the freeway driving at high rates of speed to and from work, and nobody was building a car that would get good mileage at those speeds. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole concept. And originally, it was going to be gasoline, and it was going to be gasoline vapor yeah. to between aerodynamics and weight, and that would get you could maybe 100 miles a mileage, gallon. Yeah. So the first car we did, we got 92 miles a gallon, which wasn't good enough because by then the X Prize came along. That's right. And you had to get uh, up to 100. Now we needed 100. <laughs> so the electric or the series hybrid that we've done was originally a backup plan, but because we didn't know anything about electricity, it was a backup plan. Right. So when we ran out of room at 92, we decided to dive into the electrics and we didn't know what we were doing. Now, Todd, how did you get involved? How did you guys meet up to get uh, together on this project? A friend of a friend. Uh, <laughs> his name was Andy Trottier. Uh, he's the craziest guy in the company because he's the one that first put money into the company. When George, George <laughs> has Somebody joined has to on the yeah, The first inventor yeah. is yeah. the bravest and yeah. the craziest. So he's certified, you know. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I'd known Andy for 20 years, and he kept trying to get me down to see this three-wheel car. And I'm like, Andy, I don't want to see a three-wheel car. And finally, he convinced me one day, and uh, we were going to go down the next day. The next day, he phoned and said, oh, we can't go see it. Uh, why? Because the shop burned down and the whole car's gone. Like, uh, George, oh. you have a very close relationship uh, with fire, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. that we see uh, throughout the show. And I don't want to give too much away, but uh, I guess this is part and parcel of, of embarking on a project like this. I mean, there's going to be pitfalls, but... Well, there's lots of pitfalls, but you don't expect that. Yeah, you don't expect yeah. everything to burn. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. All oh, I had was a shirt on my back and my truck. Now, so did you guys have to start from scratch yep. all over again after yep. the fire? Yeah. So what I did was right after the fire, I went to a hotel, got some modeling clay, modeled the car from memory, took it to a company locally here, had him scan and copy a full-size body out of foam, took that to the new shop. So exactly two, two weeks to the day of the fire, we were in a new shop and back wow. to the way you yeah. go. Now take us to the X Prize and the contest and the trials and tribulations that you guys went through. I mean, how did the contest work? Did you have to go to their specs or were there changes? Oh, yeah. They had a list of rules and things that they wanted in place that were way beyond what we ever thought was necessary. So that just added complexity to what we were doing and yeah. headaches and so Todd, on. Todd, yeah. what, uh, what was it that attracted you to, to getting involved in this? Because, uh, you know, you hear this and, and a man's got a dream and he's following yeah. through on it and he's building it. But, but you come in, you know, partially as an investor and partially <clears> as someone who just liked this, the technology. But what keeps you there? What, what, what intrigued me was not the car at the point of the fire, was the fact that this guy had actually got to the point he had so quickly. Mm -hmm. I wanted to meet him. Uh, because there's something to that. 
Yeah. So then I, you know, I, I'd never invested in a little private company before, uh, but I did put some money in, and then I started getting intrigued, and then I got totally involved in the company. So. Well, and there's something really special about uh, the way the whole operation runs as well. And I was talking to George a little bit about it this morning, but there's an enthusiasm. I didn't yeah. see one person throw a tool. I didn't see yeah. anyone say something, uh, you know, uh, angry or cross with another yeah. member of the team. There was no, a it's real an am uh, amazing bunch of guys. Uh, we've done this on a shoestring budget. Uh, with way less resources than probably any kind, you know, any company in the world, and yeah. we've yeah. created some pretty neat technologies as a result, and that's really what keeps us all together. I mean, the same five guys or six guys that started this are still all together five so years later. So beyond the three-wheel right cars, what else are you guys working on? Are there <laughs> any secrets that you can tell us, George? <laughs> you know, yes, lots. <laughs> <laughs> you told us a couple today, but I don't know yeah. if I can repeat them. Oh, there's lots of things on the go, but a lot of the things that we developed for the car have now turned into uh, whole other avenues of revenue that we're working on. It's yeah. interesting yeah. how it's created a business for you guys, just this 30 years of tinkering in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, and there's a fascinating element of, of watching the show as well uh, to the way that you guys work because there's a, a creativity that I think is a little bit un unexpected when you come to think about manufacturing a car, right? Like most of the stuff's there, but there's such a creative element to what you guys do. Everything that we do on that car is all by hand, everything. We build everything, we design everything, and up until recently we didn't even have drawings and then we got Bart involved and he finally got into some engin the, the engin engineer. engineer drawings for us, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah, that took us to a whole new level. But uh, it's amazing how creative you can be when you don't have the resources and the finances. Yeah. And it's amazing what you can create out of that as well, a result. Do you think people will be driving these cars one day? I'm hoping so. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the goal. Without question. And what's the reaction been? Uh, I mean, do you get feedback from industry, from, from guys that sort of, you know, do this and manufacture vehicles and stuff? Or mm -hmm. We had some really interesting feedback from major automotive designers and builders at SEMA. Yeah. And uh, it was actually a proud day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, One of the, we, we've had, uh, you know, Chrysler and GM and Ford prototype engineers at the shows come and see us and, and stand back and kind of, you know, kind of walk yeah. around and then eventually come in and start talking yeah. to us. And How they're always impressed. This? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're always impressed. The so one thing that most of them are impressed with is a windshield wiper. Why You're is kidding. that? Oh, because of a curved windshield? Yeah, most of them say, in fact, one of them I was adamant that windshield wiper doesn't work. Out of the whole car. Did you, did you prove him wrong? Oh, or? yeah, George just went over and gave it a flip, and he goes, whoa. And then he <laughs> talked to works. us for a couple hours. It doesn't so go back and forth like every other window. It also has to curve and right. follow the window. Yeah. So yeah. the mechanism that makes that work. Trade secrets. <laughs> for a price, you'll tell them. <laughs> now, if you want to follow this story, you can it's check beautiful. out X Cars. It will be airing Thursday, January 6th at 9 o'clock on Discovery. Do not miss it. Thanks so much, guys. Guys, thank you. Thank it was you a much. pleasure to meet you in thank person you. and a real pleasure to watch the show as well. Thanks.